Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our series on partnerships, accounting for partnership, and we are going to look at admission of a partner with revaluation of assets. Okay, so what I want you to understand is that there are some times that the admission of a new partner may necessitate that the partners do a revaluation of their assets and liabilities. And so when that happens, we want to know what is the true value of our assets now before the new partner comes in so that if there is any revaluation surplus or any gain profit on revaluation then the old partners will share it means that the new partner coming in is not entitled to the benefit of the revaluation because the assets revaluation is as a result of the use of the assets by the old partners and because the old partners have suffered alone through that process. The new partner coming in must not enjoy any profit on the revaluation of the asset. In the same way, if the revaluation overall results in a loss, then it means that that loss will be shared to the old partners. The new partner has no business with the revaluation of the asset, the profit or loss that are incurred or gained by that. And so that is how we are going to look at it. And so we are going to look at uh, admission of a partner plus revaluation of assets and liabilities. Okay, so what I want us to do now is to understand how to prepare the revaluation account. And once we are able to understand how to prepare the revaluation account, then we can take a practical question and solve it together. Because for the others, the capital accounts and the statements of financial position, we've already gone through that in our previous videos. And so we are going to learn how to prepare the revaluation account. Now watch. The revaluation account is like a profit and loss account. It is like... It works like a profit or loss account. The debit side is for expenses and the credit side is for incomes. And so when an asset is increasing in value, the difference or the extra increase comes here as an income. When an asset is decreasing in value, it comes here as an expense. Now, take note. When a liability is increasing in value, it comes here as an expense because liability and assets are opposite. But when a liability is decreasing rather, it comes here as an income. And I'm talking about the difference. Okay. So for example, if you have the following assets and liabilities, you have um, land to be $15,000. You have a motor vehicle with a value of $10,000. Okay. And upon the admission of a partner you are told that these assets are valued upwards as followed land is now twenty thousand this is the new value of the land now looking at the old value of the land which is fifteen thousand and the new value of the land which is twenty thousand you can tell that the land's value has appreciated it has gone up by five thousand so the difference of five thousand is an income and will be credited to the revaluation account and so we'll come here and we'll call it land, okay? And then we'll write $5,000. Why $5,000? $5,000 is the difference. That is the extra amount that has been added up. And so the revaluation account is here to take care of only the differences. And I repeat, the revaluation account is here to take care of only the differences in the values of the assets and liabilities. Not necessarily the old value or the new value, but the difference. And so if your statement of financial position before the admission of a partner originally had land value to be 15000 and you are told that revaluation has taken place and land's value is now 20000 what has happened is that the value of land has gone up by 5000 And because it is an asset and the value has gone up, it is a gain. It is a gain. It is seen as an income and therefore must be credited to the revaluation account. Remember that I told you that it is the credit side that is catering for the income and the debit side for the gains. And so let us assume that the motor vehicle's value rather has gone down and the new value for the motor vehicle 
is $9,000. Now, take a look. Because the new value has now gone down, we have to look for the difference. The difference is $1,000. And because it is a decrease, it will come to the debit as an expense. And so we we'll write here $1,000 in the name of the motor vehicle. Now, allow me to prove this to you from a double entry point of view. Now, let us assume this is a land account. Now, the land account will have a balance brought forward of $15,000. Okay? Now, we are told it is being revalued upwards to $20,000. It means the balance carried down must be $20,000. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to add $5,000 to the debit side. And when you add $5,000, you call it revaluation. So that the balance carried down will eventually be 20000 Now, the moment you debit the account and you call it revaluation, according to the double entry, we say that every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. And that is why we come to the revaluation account and then we credit it in the name of land so that it will complete the double entry. And so, therefore, any time there is a revaluation, when an asset is increasing, the difference is credited to the revaluation account. If the asset is decreasing, the difference is debited to the revaluation account. The opposite is true with liabilities. Now, with the case of the motor vehicle, let us assume this is the motor vehicle's account as well. Okay, so we'll have a balance brought forward of 10000 Now, remember that we are saying the new value should be 9000 Therefore, we should reduce this account by 1000 So, because of that, it will appear on the credit side in the name of revaluation, $1,000. So, that balance carried down eventually will be 9000 And that means that once we have credited motor vehicle account, the corresponding entry will come to the debit of revaluation account. And that is also the proof for that. Okay. So, this is with the assets. Now, let us assume there were liabilities of let's say payables so payables of three thousand dollars and we are told that these payables are to be reduced to be reduced though it's not usually possible but let's assume it's to be reduced to um two thousand five hundred now payables is a liability and so if it is reducing it means that it is a gain to the Company. So let us assume this is payables account. It has a credit balance. So balance brought forward will be on the credit side, 3000 And then we are supposed to reduce it to 2000 If you are reducing it to 2500 it means that the balance carried down should eventually be 2005 And that means you have to debit this account in the name of revaluation, 500 as a difference. So that eventually your balance carried down will be 2005 And once we have debited payables, corresponding entry comes to the credit. So we'll come and write payables in the credit side of the revaluation account on that side at 500 That is the difference. And so when a liability is increasing, it is the same as when an asset is decreasing. When a liability is decreasing, it is the same as when an asset is increasing. All right. So this side will cater for all the gains. And this side of the revaluation account will cater for all the expenses. Then what, what happens is that at the end of the day, the gains minus the losses, then we we'll determine whether there was a profit or loss on revaluation. So this account is to determine whether there was a profit on revaluation or there was a loss on revaluation. And so what is going to happen is that, let us assume this is all that we have done. It means that we are getting the debit side to be 5,500 in total, the credit to be 1,000 in total, giving us a difference of 4,500, which is a profit on revaluation. Now, this 4,500 will be shared for the old partners. The new partner coming in will not get part of this profit. And when it is shared, it's going to be taken to their capital accounts or current accounts, whichever that they are using. All right. So what I want you to understand is, before we take the question, is that the revaluation account is a profit and loss account. Its sole purpose is to cater for increase or decrease in assets or liabilities. And when it is a gain, analytically, we credit to the income side. When it is a loss, analytically, we treat that 
just like we treat an expense. And the difference, whether it's a profit or a loss, will be shared for the old partners. Okay, so this is what the revaluation account is all about. So if you understand this, we can go forward and take a question. And then we'll look at the question and understand that better. Okay, so let us take this question together. Aqua and Razak, who are equal partners, agreed on 1st January 2019 to admit Achulo for one-third of their profits. The following was the statement of financial position of Aqua and Razak as at 31st December 2018. And so we have the statement of financial position. Their non-current assets to be Kiosk Shop, 15,000 Ghana cities. Shop fittings, 1,600 Ghana cities. Giving us total non-current assets of 16,600. Then they have current assets to be stock in trade, 4,800. Trade receivables, 1,200. They have cash to be 400. Giving them a total current asset of 6,400. So they have a total asset of 20, uh, 23,000. And then they have capital accounts. Aqua has a capital account balance of 10,000. And then Razak has a capital account balance of 7,600. Okay. So they have long-term liability. That is a loan from Apia to be 2,400. And current liability to be trade creditors of 3,000. And current liabilities to be trade payables of 3,000 Ghana cities. Now we move on to the other information. The terms of the admission included the revaluation of the firm's assets and liabilities, which were made as follows. Now pay attention. Kiosk shop is to be revalued upwards to 16,400. Stock in trade is now 4,000 Ghana cities. Trade creditors is now 2,460. Then we continue. A provision of 5% was made on receivables for doubtful debts and goodwill was created at a value of 3,000 Ghana cities. Achulo is to contribute capital amounting to 8,000 Ghana cities made of his motor vehicle valued at 5,600 Ghana cities and the balance by cash. You are required to prepare I. Revaluation account, II, capital account, III, statement of financial position as it would appear after the admission of Achulo. Okay, so this is a very simple question, but it's not that simple if you don't understand it. And I'm sure from what I have explained going forward, our understanding will be better. Okay, so I'm going to clean the board and then we are going to solve this question. Okay, so like I said, this is a very simple question. We are supposed to prepare three things, the revaluation account, the capital account, and the statement of financial position after the admission. Okay, so let us begin with the revaluation account. Revaluation account. Okay, so from the idea of what I explained, it's very simple. We have some assets and liabilities in the statement of financial position and they are being revalued. Now, we are told that the terms of the admission included the revaluation of the firm's assets and liabilities, which were as follows. So, Kiosk Shop is now 16400 So, what we do now is that we have to compare the value of the Kiosk Shop in the statement of financial position. And then we come and look at the new value. Then we'll see whether there was an increase in value or there was a decrease in value. And then we'll know how to record it in a revaluation account. So when we look at the kiosk shop, in the statement of financial position is 15,000. Currently, it's being revalued upwards to 16,400. That is a gain. The difference is 1,400 from 15,000 upwards to 16,400. And I told you when an asset is increasing, we credit to the revaluation account. And so we'll come and credit it and call it its own name, kiosk shop at a value of 1,400. Why am I writing 1,400? Because that is the difference between the new value and the old value. All right, so that is it. And then we are also told that stock in trade 
is now 4,000 Ghana cities. Now, in the statement of financial position originally, we have stock in trade to be 4,800. And so if it is now 4,000, then that means there is a decrease in value. Stock in trade is an asset. And so when it is reducing value, we debit it as a loss. And so we we'll come here and we we'll say stock in trade at a value of 800. 800 is the difference between the old value and the new value. I'm sure we understand that. And then we we'll look at the next item. The next item here is trade creditors or trade payables, which is 2,460. Now, trade creditors or trade payables originally is 3,000 in the statement of financial position. And so if it has reduced to 2,460, then that means that there is a decrease, a decrease of 540. If you compare that and this, 3,000 minus 2,460 is 540. And because a liability is decreasing, we are no more going to pay. So it's a gain to us. And therefore, that will come to the credit side as trade payables. Trade payables at 540. And so 540, we put that on the credit side. I'm sure we are okay with that as well. All right. And then we continue reading. Now, we are also told that provision of 5% was made on debtors for doubtful debt. Now, if you calculate provision for that's for debt on your receivables. What is the effect of it? And if the effect of provision for that for debt is that it reduces the value of receivables. And so in other words, the value or the figure that we are going to get for the provision for that for debt is the reduction in receivables. Now let's look at our receivables figure here. Trade receivables is 1,200. Now listen, Pro receivables itself is an asset. The effect of the provision on it is that it's going to reduce the value. And so it is like the asset is reducing value and it's going to reduce by the difference of the provision. And so we have to calculate the provision for doubtful debt. And we are told that that is 5% on the receivables. The value of receivables is 1,200. And so 5% on 1,200 will be 60 Ghana cities. All right, so that means that the new assets value or the new value for receivables will, be, will no more be 1,200, but it's going to reduce by 60. And therefore, this 60 is a reduction. And because it's an asset and it's reducing, it's going to be debited to the revaluation account. So anytime you see provision for doubtful debt, debit that to the revaluation account. Why? Because provisions are reducing the value of receivables, which is an asset. Okay, and therefore, we will come and record provision for doubtful debt, 60 Ghana cities, because it is reducing the value of receivables. I hope you are okay with that. And then, let's see if there is any other thing that we have to put into the revaluation account. And that one is the goodwill valuation. So we are told that a goodwill was created as a value of 3,000. Now, in our previous video, where there was no general revaluation, we would have prepared a separate goodwill account. But over here, because revaluation is here, goodwill itself will be treated in the revaluation account. Now, what is happening? It means that in the previous statement of financial position, there was no goodwill. Now, there is goodwill. Now, it means that goodwill has gone up by 3,000. It, it, it's just like this. Now, if you have goodwill to be zero, it means that there was no goodwill. It means that if you have goodwill to be zero, and you are saying goodwill is now 3,000 Ghana cities, it means it has increased from the value of zero to 3,000. That is the meaning. If goodwill was not in existence and you create it afresh, whatever new value that you have, it means that it has increased from zero to 3,000, and therefore the difference is 3,000. Revaluation account takes care of the differences. But in this case, 3,000 is the same as the difference of the goodwill. And therefore, we'll come to the credit side of the revaluation account and write 3,000 for goodwill. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for the revaluation account. Nothing is going to be added. And so, we close it off to determine if there was any profit or loss. So, we can now close the revaluation account. Now, the debit side is, the credit side is more than the debit side. 
That is 4,940. So 4,940. That will be the total for the two sides. Now, if you compare, the difference will be 4,080. 4,080. Now, listen to how we close the revaluation account. With a revaluation account, we are not going to put the difference as a balance carry down. Remember, we are going to share for the old partners. Now, we are told that the old, old partners, Aqua and Razak, are equal partners, meaning that uh, their profit and loss sharing ratio is half each. And what we are going to do is that we are going to share this difference of 4,080 for them in their old ratios. And therefore, we are going to call it capitals. Why am I calling it capitals? Because corresponding entry should move into the capital account, the credit side of the capital account, as an addition to their capital. And so we'll call it capitals, share of profit on revaluation. Now, even if you are able to bring the capitals and you don't write a share of profit, you are okay. The most important narration here is the capital, not the share of profit. I know students who write share of profit and just share. So that when they go to the capital account, they forget to bring it. Now, if you put the capital there, it reminds you that the corresponding entry should move into your capital account. And therefore, we are going to share this between Aqua and, and Razak. And if it's equal, 1 over 2 of the profit, each of them, then it means you are going to have 2,040 each. All right, so this is how you close off the revaluation account. You close it off by sharing the difference to make the account equal. So this is their profit on revaluation. All right, so if there is no question, then we continue. After the revaluation account, we move to the capital account. So let us open their capital accounts as well in a columnar form. So we have three columns each. So the next thing to do is to open their capital accounts in columnar form. So capital accounts for Aqua, Razak, and Achulo. Aqua, Razak, and Achulo. Okay, so we put our currency signs there as well. Okay, so we begin with their capital accounts. We start with a balance brought forward. Now, from their old, uh, from the statement of financial position, Aqua's capital was ten thousand, and that of Razak was seven thousand six hundred. Okay, so that is all we have. And then the next thing is to transfer their profits on revaluation. It was on the debit side, so it will appear on the credit side in the name of revaluation profit. So revaluation. 2040 for Aqua, 2040 for Razak. So that is what they have assets now. Then that would have been all. But remember that Achulo is coming in. And Achulo is coming in with a capital of 8,000 Ghana cities. But this capital, we are told that 5,600 of it is motor vehicles value. So he's bringing a motor vehicle worth 5,600 and the balance will be paid in cash. And therefore, a Chulo's capital of 8,000 will have to be split into motor vehicle of 5,600. And then cash is the difference. The difference, now we are told that he's bringing in capital of 8,000 Ghana cities. Just that he's bringing a portion as cash and a portion as a value of a motor vehicle. And therefore, if he's bringing 5,600 as motor vehicle, then the difference is 2,400, and that is coming in as cash. All right. Okay, so we don't have anything more to bring to the capital account, so we'll just close it off. And so closing off the capital account, we are going to have Aquas total to be 12,040. 
and then we'll have Razak's capital to be 9,640. And we know Achulu's capital will be 8,000 Ghana cities. And that is going to be their balance carried down on the capital account. 9,640 and 8,000. And so we'll see balance carried down 12,040 for aqua 9,640 for Razak, and 8,000 Ghana cities for Achulu. So we can bring their balances down 12,040, 9,640, and then 8,000 Ghana cities. So this is how the capital account of aqua Razak, and Achulu is going to look like after the revaluation account. Now, the final thing for us to do per the requirement is to write up the statement of financial position after the admission of Achulo. And so we are going to draft a statement of financial position, taking into consideration Achulo's capital contribution and any other changes that might have happened because of the revaluation. Okay, so finally, we'll draft the statement of financial position. So I'll say statement of financial position. Assets, 1st January 2019. Okay, so. All right, so I bring my currency signs. And then I'm beginning with the non-current assets. With a non-current asset, now remember that this statement of financial position that we are going to prepare, we are going to prepare with the new values, the revalued figures, not the old ones. And so with our kiosk shop, we are going to pick the new value, which is 16,400. And then there was goodwill. Goodwill of 3,000 was valued. And then finally, there was also a shop fittings. Now, the shop fittings was not revalued at all. We didn't talk about anything with the shop fittings. And so we maintain the value of the shop fittings as 1,600. That should have been all for the non-current assets. But remember that there was motor vehicles. Achulo came in with a motor vehicle. That is the new partner. Brought motor vehicles at a value of 5,000. 600 so that will also be added to the new statement of financial position and so we can add that up and then we'll see that the total of our non-current assets is 26,600 that will be the total of the non-current assets and then we'll look at our current assets as well now with the current assets there was a stock in trade remember that the stock in trade also was revalued and so we are going to bring in the new value and the new value is 4000 ghana cities and then there was receivables now receivables was originally 1200 but there was a provision for that for that which will reduce it up to a value of 60 and therefore receivables will be 1200 minus 60 and that is going to give us 1140 ghana cities and so this is going to be the value for receivables and then finally there was cash now remember the cash the value of cash in the question is four, 400 cities sorry 400 ghana cities but the new partner also brought in some cash the new partner brought in some cash of 2400 and so cash and so cash is going to be 400 plus 2,400. That is going to give us 2,800. And so we can add that and then we'll see that the total of our current asset is 7,940. 7,940. And that is going to give us a total asset of 34,540. So that will be our total assets.
All right, so this is the total asset. So we can now move to equity and liabilities. We can now move to equity and liabilities. So we begin with the equity portion. Now, the capital accounts. So capitals. Now, with the capitals, we had each of them, their capital balance is aqua. Aqua's capital balance is 12,040. Razak, the capital account of Razak was 9,640. What we are picking is that we are picking the closing balances of the new capital account that we prepared. And that of Achulu is 8,000. And therefore, when we add up the capital accounts balances, we are going to have 29,680 as the total capital accounts balance. And then, from here, there was a long-term liability, which is a loan. The loan from APIA. So we are told that there was a loan that they took from APIA. And so we have to add that loan also. And that's going to be 2,400. That is what we have in the original statement of financial position. Okay, so that will be the loan. And then from there, we have our current liabilities, as you know from the format. This is the total asset weight. And so our current liabilities, we have trade payables or creditors. And remember that these payables was revalued as well in the question. And so we are going to bring the new value. The new value is 2,640. That is the new value of the trade payables and so we can now add all the three and be sure that it is the same as the total assets sorry the payables should be 2460 rather and therefore when we add that up we are going to have 34,540, which is the same as the total asset and so it has balanced now, what I want you to understand is that solving questions involving revaluation is not difficult. The only change is that you are going to prepare a different account called revaluation account. And that is what you are going to use to cater for your increase or decrease in assets. The rest of whatever you are going to do is the same as what we did earlier. And the concept of partnership accounts becomes very, 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 very easy. So this is where I want to end today's class. We are going to continue in our next video on partnerships we are going to look at dissolution of partnerships how to account for dissolution of partnerships but until then i want you to subscribe to this channel share this video let others also have a benefit let us grow together and let us be successful together until we meet again another time it is bye for now